So as requested, this is going to be my guide for Zoom. Uh, so forget Zoom, go to temple.zoom.us. If you want to join, if you are given a link to join a meeting, this is how a lot of students can join the meeting by giving a uh, meeting or a personal link name. More on that later, but for preference, mine will be Prof. Andrew Rosen, right? And so I could give somebody my ID, my alias and they could join a meeting that I've set up um, rather than having to try a number. Uh, you can host a meeting, right? Which will prompt it to run Zoom. It will open Zoom if you have it installed and you can immediately start or you can just sign in. Um, let's take a look at your profile page. So on your profile page, there's a number of things your account details, details about you. Um, so you can give yourself more information. You can change your avatar that you're going to use. So let's like uh, see this. Let's see, um, upload, do, do, do. So D, pictures, go with avatars. And let's go with, oh, class mix up, classic one. So there, we've got an avatar now. Um, so when you start a meeting, you your meet your rooms have a ID attached to them. Uh, this is the one you will generally be using for instant meetings. You can change that number apparently, but honestly, it's easier to set up a personal link. I set up Prof Andrew Rosen, but you can s set up something unique that somebody hasn't claimed. So if you just use your first name, somebody's probably claimed it at some point. Because again, you're not the only person. It's not just Temple, it's like everybody else in the world, probably. Well, actually, looks like it would just be Temple, my bad. Okay, but still, there's probably somebody with your first name at Temple. Um, so notice that we can have up to 300 people. That's pretty much it for there. So we can join a meeting or host a meeting from here. So let's go ahead and host a meeting. Um, and I'll just simply click on this to open Zoom. Right. If you don't have it installed, it'll install it. This will install it and here. So let me just show you what would happen if we were to install Zoom normal. If we were to just open it from the Zoom application itself and meaning for all, you'd be getting to this screen. Now, there's a couple of really interesting things we can do here um, in the settings by clicking this gear. Uh, first, right, checking your uh, webcam, you can select what ratio you have. Uh, you can check your source if you have multiple sources. There's a couple things like touch up my appearance, make it a bit better. Um, let's see, spotlight my video when I speak, it's interesting. So there's things you can do here. One thing that's interesting is the virtual background feature, which does need some, let's see, which needs a plugin. So let's go ahead, do, 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 download the smart background background plugin, which is pretty cool. I have other software that does this, but look at that. It chops, it looks for my, for me, it chops me out. And basically this is a great way to show that you're not in your, um, you know, in the room where you're unpacking all your stuff and you can just simply slap a new virtual background in. You can add your own image, right? But they've got some already there. And now it looks like I'm really cool. But this is a way that basically if you have to do it in your kitchen or something, then there you go. Um, I don't think this works on Linux because I tried it on Linux and it didn't exactly work. If you have a green screen, it works even better, um, which is um, – and if you try checking this, it will go all berserk if, because <laughs> – so, you know. All right. Okay. So let's go ahead and show how, how a meeting works. But anyway, I just thought it was a really good feature to show how, how, how to use that. If you are hosting a meeting, and I'm doing this for my faculty, but a lot of my students can get some use of this as well, you can go to a new meeting. There I am. Uh, so there's two ways you can join with audio. If you're having trouble with your – you're joining with your, your computer audio, you can test your speaker and mic. Yes. Yes. Speak and pause. You can pause. Great. So it works. If for some reason you are having trouble with your audio, you can dial one of these numbers and then it will prompt you, I think, for the meeting ID. You plug that in. Boom. You can now, it's now like dialing into a conference call. 
So you can now use that to um, use your audio instead. Done. So I'm actually going to join with computer audio. Now it's using computer audio. So let's look at what we've got here. We've got mute. If I mute this, then people won't be able to hear me, right? It says this. Now you can hear me because I'm not recording from Zoom. I'm recording using a different screen capture technology so I can show you that stuff. Um, you can also select an audio sources and you'll notice I've got a, quite a few. So you probably, you won't have nearly as many. Um, also you can do the same for video. You can also stop your video and you're now going to replace your, um, th your, uh, video with that icon useful if you've got a toddler who suddenly runs on you know runs into your room behind you that would never happen to me all right so then here's all the really cool stuff so invite you can grab the link to your meeting which is this and share it via announcement if you have to um really to invite students to meeting all you have to do is just um take one of these two links Assuming you just start the meeting like this, you just take one of these links and send it out to your students in an announcement. Um, if it's like a scheduled meeting or something, I think you might want to. You might be safer if you do this, and you can copy that and then send put it out in an announcement in Canvas. This is the safest way to do it, um, um, or just try using the schedule feature. Um, next, we have ch uh, we have managing participants over here. So this is actually a really cool, a cool feature. Um, you can host, you can mute various people such as yourself, but also if you're the host, you can mute other people. In fact, you can mute everybody um, in case they're making too much noise or somebody's giving you feedback. And you can also make it so that they stay muted unless you unmute them. So you can mute everybody, you can unmute everybody. Um, the students over here will have a, have a, um, hand raise feature and you'll see a hand raise, little hand raise icon next to him. Like if we click these icons, we see yes, no, right? So you can ask a question if everybody understands, have him click yes or no and you'll get a count. Go slower, go faster, right? This one is need, if they need a break or if they're away, very useful. Um, so these kind of things are useful for giving very quick signs. Um, you can do polling, asking a question. This will adding a question this is fairly straight i haven't really done this but it looks fairly straightforward just but it brings up a thing in the web browser um i'm going to skip sharing for a second because that's a bit more involved next is you've got a chat feature also you can pop these out if we wanted to um let's see and can we pop this back in merge into meeting window sure so if you have other people and you just and eh, you can students can basically type messages this way, right? Meet everybody. You can also send it to direct uh, to direct messages. Allow, and you can also, but you can also set it so like that they can't do chat like that, or they can only chat with me, or everybody has to say what they're saying out loud, or you can let them send private messages to everybody, um, as well as be out loud. Okay. Um, now recording to record your lecture, you just hit this button and I have a separate video on recording as you've already seen close captioning. Uh, let's see, assign someone to type. I haven't really messed with this, but honestly with closed captioning, I just upload my stuff to YouTube. Um, however, there are concerns about you uploading zoom meetings to YouTube. Just be careful because student names right uh so be aware of that ferpa and all finally breakout rooms this is possibly my one of my favorite feature right suppose we have 100 students because it's a giant class and i want them to work in groups of four i will just simply say assign 100 partic uh, participants that will be automatically counted um, everybody but you into 25 rooms you can either have them so it'd be four per room yay division um that you can distribute them automatically or you can let them choose them. Uh, I think this will let them choose themselves. I haven't really tried, had the chance to try it yet, but automatically, boom. And now everybody's in rooms and I could jump into that or I can recreate these rooms and respread them. 
And basically they get into their own private Zoom meeting for a bit that they can work individually and there's not going to be any of that cross chatter that is going to be really, really distracting. Almost as distracting as a window covering um, the recording in my head. Um, all right. Finally, we've got the screen sharing function. So the screen sharing function is if you're doing slides or something, this is like the way to communicate with your students. Uh, we can, if you've got multiple monitors, you can do that. If you've got an iPad or an iPhone that you want to draw on, you can do that. If you've got, well, one thing we can do is we can create a whiteboard over here and the students will see me drawing on this whiteboard. It's exceptionally useful if you've got like a Wacom tablet or something and like this thing. Oh, the camera, of course. It's cutting it out um, because, so beware, if you're trying to hold something up like this, it can be tricky, but this is a Wacom tablet. I got this from Micro Center. I'm apparently the fifth person to ask for one today. Um, so they apparently sound like hot cakes and, uh, and toilet paper. So, um, but that's a useful way to uh, do things. Um, if you want to use a, uh, you can create a virtual whiteboard um you know select it like this delete it you can clear it pretty easily oh didn't mean to delete that undo that right spotlight something um you know um but most importantly when you're doing recording like this notice that i'm over here if we have multiple participants so if we're sharing our screen we've got multiple participants it would the format will change over here um, and your all the stuff moves up here. So to stop sharing, you hit this button. You can also temporarily stop sharing with the pause, but I'll just stop sharing. And I can now share, let's say, my sc screen one. Now that I'm screen sharing screen one, it looks something like this. Right? This is what's on my screen. If I open up um, a if I open up a program, this is one way I can do this, or you can share the PowerPoint on your uh, on your computer. Um, the way to view that uh, this function is that this is essentially connecting to a virtual projector that all your students can see on their computer, right? Essentially, use this if you want to mimic set, uh, hooking up your computer to a projector, um, just with a lot less headaches, to be honest. Uh, you can also annotate like this, right? So you can use this as a whiteboard. Uh, you can also apparently let people, other people annotate. Um, one other thing that's really cool about this, by the way, is that if your, your students can share screen too, if you allow them, and by default, I believe they're allowed. And this is possibly the one of the best features I've had, especially when I've been teaching students remotely, um, which is that up here, if they're sharing, there's an option to let them, to let you control their computer. So if, if they are sharing with you, you're going to see this. So you go up here and if you want to take control of their computer to like type on their computer or something, because they're showing you something and they've got a bug that's very easy to fix, but very hard for them, for you to describe using words, you can, there will be an option in this menu that says request control of the computer, they'll get a pop on your screen. And then essentially you, it's like having a uh, remoting in into their screen. Um, so it's very, very, very useful. Um, so just, that's a really cool option. You know, go through and read all these things. It's very, very useful. Um, but it works fairly well. Um, I have no idea how this is going to scale to hit my, 100, 150 students in CIS 1051. Um, but for smaller classes, I think this will really work pretty well. All right, so that is my breakdown of ten uh, of this um, of Zoom and the basic features there. All right, if you have any other questions, be sure to send me an email.